Good evening. I am Miriam abdul Kawi, and here's what's ahead for you on 7 News tonight. A bad weekend in Belize, two died in murders, three died in traffic accidents. We'll have the latest. And the village school burns in St. Matthews. We'll tell you what's going to happen to the 405 students affected. Plus, CEO in the Ministry of Transport, Marconi Leal, under fire, but has he called it quits? We'll tell you what he said. Also, she applied for land in the sea on North Peacocker, and tonight, the woman who wanted to own the seabed says she's stepping back. We'll have the latest. These stories and much more ahead on 7 News tonight, so please stay tuned. This newscast is brought to you by Cellular World, your authorized Samsung distributor. Live your best life and explore more with Samsung. Go on an adventure, travel in style, and capture your memories with a Galaxy. This month, Samsung phones start at an extremely low price of only $309, and Galaxy Tab start at only $399. The full Galaxy lineup includes the A03, A04, A23, A33, A53, S20 FE, Z Flip, Z Fold 4, Tab A7, and the latest and most innovative release, the S23 series. Perfect for capturing all of life's adventures. Plus, when you buy any A-Series device, you'll get a free 32GB SD card. Shop these awesome devices at any of Samsung's authorized resellers countrywide, including Cellular World, Digi, Quartz, and Odette's Home Center, and get one-year local warranty with your purchase. So, venture out and explore more with Samsung. Do you want quick cash for your gold? Then, take advantage of Monica's Pawn Shop's Big Loans on Gold, gold. and our guaranteed low rate of only 10% on all pawn jewelry. But it doesn't stop there. We also pawn TVs, buy scrap gold, and pawn vehicles that you can still drive. Visit Monica's Pawn Shop today in our Belize City location at number 128 Cemetery Road, our Belmopan location at number 5 Garden Plaza, our Orange Walk location, number 2 Belize, Carazal Road. Give us a call at 207 -0 and get more money for your gold jewelry. More Belizeans have jobs. 95% of those who seek employment are working. 95%. For the first time in the history of Belize, we have an unemployment rate of 5%. Thanks to a PUP government. 42,965 workers have received a $1.70 or 51% per hour salary increase because of the recent increase in the minimum wage to $5 per hour. Atla Express. Es un servicio que te permite realizar transacciones financieras cómodamente en comercios cerca de ti. Con Atla Express puedes retirar efectivo, realizar pagos de facturas y tarjeta de crédito, comprar recargas y transferir entre tus cuentas. Solo necesitas una identificación válida y tu tarjeta de débito Visa de Atlantic Bank. Si no eres cliente de Atlantic Bank, Siempre puedes disfrutar de este servicio pagando en efectivo. Atla Express es fácil, conveniente, seguro y está cerca de ti. ¿Sabías que Hospital Galenia se sitúa en el lugar 27 del Ranking Nacional de Hospitales Privados de México. Estudio realizado por la Fundación Mexicana para la Salud y se ubica en el top 3 de la zona sur. Siempre a la vanguardia, Hospital Galenia, más que un hospital. The UDP was traditionally known as the party whose leaders stood for patriotism and principle. But today, the characters controlling our party are driven by self-interest and beholden to special interests. 
While thousands of Belizeans strongly oppose the Ashcroft Waterloo project, which experts say would endanger our precious barrier reef, Shine fully supports and tries to justify it. The Waterloo Port Project proposal, which, if approved, will bring tremendous economic development to Belize. Perifit, meanwhile, is 100% behind the State Bank project with no express justification, leaving us to conclude it is all about who owns it. I'm not sympathetic to the State Bank project. I've been 100% full support of the State Bank project. How tragically the UDP has fallen from principled leadership to shameless lobbyists in control. As the UDP prepares to celebrate its 50th anniversary as a mass party, it is time to return to our foundation with leaders who stand for patriotism and principle and rid ourselves of those motivated by self-interest and beholden to special interest. Mikado announces the arrival of new designs in dress fabrics, sheet and fabrics, curtain fabrics, and a widest assortment of company uniform fabrics. We also just received the long-awaited wallpaper and 3D wallpaper with many new designs and colors to choose from. Also in our new arrivals, we have pillows, curtains, bath towels, cushions, bed cover sets, and there is so much that it's way too much to mention. Just visit Mikado at number 37 Albert Street. And remember now, at Mikado, we are the ones famous for better prices, and even in this pandemic, we are still known for the best prices. Mikado, number 37 Albert Street, your textile palace. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss. Please. You're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. This past weekend saw too many traumatic deaths, two by murder and three by fatal accident. We begin with those whose lives were taken away by gun violence. Starting in Belize City, a 29-year-old father of one was brutally murdered on Sunday right outside his home as his girlfriend watched helplessly. Raheem Arnold had just moved in with her late last year, and the family says that his girlfriend's ex-boyfriend didn't appreciate that he was living in the same neighborhood. While the police are still investigating, those closest to Arnold believe that he was killed out of jealousy. Courtney Menzies spoke with his sister today, who had just walked with him in the Peace March last week not knowing she would lose him only a few days later. Here's that story. 29-year-old Rahim Arnold was one of the men marching for peace in the city on Friday night. But by Sunday, violence would find him in his yard. He had gone to the store, and when he came back, he was ambushed and mercilessly attacked, eventually collapsing in the drain outside his fence. While Arnold fought back as hard as he could, according to police, it was him against two armed men, and he didn't stand a chance. Initial re investigation revealed that two male persons, one of our uh, East Indian de descent and uh, Hispanic, another of our uh, Hispanic descent, um, entered Mr. Arnold's premises. Um, he ensued in a struggle with both men, managed to get away from them. He was chased around in his yard, and unfortunately, four shots were fired in his direction, causing his fatal injury. Do you know what caused these two men to attack Mr. Arnold? From the preliminary investigation, I'm just going by the attack that took place yesterday. But I have been reading a lot of hearsay on social media, and I've asked the investigators to look into those other avenues that people are alleging out there. And not just shot, 
but stabbed as well, according to his family. On Friday, his sister kept a watchful eye on him throughout the march, not knowing that the threat against his life would find him right at home. Now, this family is mourning the loss of another sibling killed in the month of March. Yeah, he walked for the, the peace march Friday. We're gone. He took off his shirt and put on one of Dawson's shirt and me and he walked together. And every minute me and he walk, I did look for my brother. When he did walk, I could walk. I keep head, cause they're not with nothing, no gang, nothing. But you know how they boy they go. You know I see a whole among a gang boy. They all about the place, so I just they watch, you know, and they keep eye for my brother. Me and he walk, we come we walk to the end. And Sunday, this are the news that we get. I can't believe this broken to week. And my mind, I don't know how my mind even take this. Too, too much, my mind got eight, and we, are, we only left with six, so we know. Thursday, my brother make three years, and they kill my next brother. And now this not that for we do again. It's so hard. This hard for my mind, this hard for all of we. I don't know what exactly happened. I don't know when my brother do they. I can't, I, I, I don't know what exactly happened, but I heard they stab, they stab my ya, one shot her. That they said a two of them, and they chance out her life. They say slip down, they joke up her. And though the police are still piecing together the motive, the family has suspicions of their own. Did you know if he had previous altercations or problems with... Um, the father of his girlfriend's children? I had the other day, they have a previous um, problem the other day. So I don't know if that, that lead to this problem, you know? I don't know, because my brother, they wrong. Nobody want to do my brother nothing. So I guess that a problem, they lead my brother to a death. Because they said last two weeks, they two may have some problem between. I know they said the, the girl don't have nothing to do with the father, but he look like he don't want to leave, she give up. That my brother live with she, my brother, she don't have a life together, don't have a son together. Don't they make their life together? He look like he never, he may care, accept that. That's that what it look like to me. And now Arnold's one-year-old son will have to grow up without his father. A man that his sister said always knew how to liven up a room. He was a so wonderful person. He, he always make you smile, always talk, thing, make you laugh. My brother was a, was a so... Excited person, always happy. He not life at the party, everybody know that. Raheem, a.k.a. foot to that life at the party when he the wrong way at party and we are enjoy himself. As a father who he dedicated all his life to his son. His son, one year, he, one year and change since his son born, he dedicated the life to his son. He mind his son, take care of his son when he man not the wrong, that he do everything for his son. And then no whole libra I cope with this because he looks so lovely, father. I don't know how my nephew will cope with this. For the Menzies, 7 News. Arnold was working as a supervisor at CYDP. The weekend's second murder took place out west in Camalote Village. This time, 23-year-old Floyd Montero was shot to the back of the head sometime on Friday night. It happened on a feeder road just off Thimbrel's Nazarene Church. That's where the cops believe that an unknown assailant caught up with Montero and fired at least four shots at him. He'd last been seen exiting the home of the Trapp family who lived nearby in the Good Living Ranch area. This morning, we got details on his death from ASP Fitzroy Yearwood. On the 17th March, sometime around 11.30 p.m., police responded to a scene in the Good Living Ranch area of, um, I see a thing saying Camalote Village and one saying Roaring Creek. All I know is it's the Good Living Ranch area where they found a motionless body on a feeder road identified as Floyd Montero, 23 years, of Roaring Creek Village. This person was seen lying face down with gunshot injury to the body. Initial investigation revealed that he was out socializing in the village earlier, in the village of Kamalota, sorry, earlier that evening. And um, unfortunately, he was approached by someone who fired four shots in 
his direction causing his fatality. And did he have any previous altercations or problems with anybody? Well, like I said, the investigators haven't indicated that to me so far. Um, so I would, wouldn't want to speculate about anybody's character. The feeder road, do you, are you aware if it's a well-lit area or if it's darkened? That much I can't, I can't answer is that because that was not indicated to me. No arrests have been made. And while those two men were murdered, three lives were lost in fatal traffic accidents over the weekend. We'll start in Ladyville, where 22-year-old Joshua Martinez was killed while trying to jumpstart his vehicle early on Saturday morning. He was on the side of the road with an off-duty police officer, David Griffith, and another man when a drunk driver ran into his vehicle, which then slammed into him. And now Martinez's close-knit family is trying desperately to come to terms with the loss of a young man who should have been getting ready to celebrate his birthday. Courtney Menzies spoke with his aunt and has this story. Joshua Martinez would have been celebrating his 23rd birthday tomorrow. But instead of a party, his family is now planning a funeral. That's because Martinez was killed by a drunk driver early Saturday morning in Ladyville as he was parked on the shoulder of the highway. My nephew... His, one of his friends and his girlfriend were together in the vehicle. They were going that direction to eruption, right? And the vehicle shut down. His vehicle shut down. So he parked his vehicle on the left-hand side. So when he parked his vehicle on the left-hand side, the friends were coming from eruption to give him that jump so the vehicle could have started. The driver of a vehicle, Mr. Manuel Ramos, was traveling from the direction of the 24-hour gas station towards Belize, where he unfortunately, unfortunately collided into one of the vehicles on the scene, causing that vehicle to hit Mr. Martinez, who died on the spot. Mr. Griffith also received um, injuries and was transported to the KHMH. And the grief over Martinez's death has blanketed his family, who loved him immensely. His mother was unable to speak about her oldest child, and his aunt said that the call on Saturday morning devastated her. When I received that news on March 18th at 5 a.m., and I got that news, I literally fell to the ground and started screaming. I did not went on the scene. I didn't have the strength to do so because I needed to be strong for my sister. So I didn't went on that scene any at all. We know that somebody has been arrested and charged and we know that person was driving under the influence. How much more does this compound everything that you're feeling? It, uh, I don't, I am lost of words, hence the reason why I'm taking my time to say what I need to say, because it, it, uh, that young man doesn't know what he did to my family. So, he did a lot, especially to my sister, and hence the reason why I'm here speaking on behalf of her because she's not in the right state at the moment to speak to the media. She's not out here to tell people about my nephew. So he doesn't know what he did to my family. And as a DJ, Martinez's passion was entertaining others. And his aunt said that he was the man to call if you wanted to have fun. He worked for himself. He, he's a DJ. Um, he's always... Like Vijay said, he's always on the hustling side. He hosts a lot of shows. He DJs for many different clubs. You know, people want parties and so they hire him. So he was well known. He was a very jovial person. He's very amicable. 
Joshua is very lively, Joshua is very active, and Joshua is very free handed. Joshua helped a lot of people. You know, he was always willing, he was always, he was always willing to give that extra hand, that, that lending hand. Whoever knew my nephew knew that he was loved by many. And the process for justice has started with the arrest of Manuel Ramos, who was charged for driving a vehicle without due care and attention, causing death by careless conduct, manslaughter by negligence, and having an alcohol concentration above the prescribed limit. Courtney Menzies, 7 News. Martinez had no children. Ramos will also be charged for the injuries that PC Griffith and Martinez's friend sustained. And quite tragically, another of the weekend's fatal accidents involved two boys in Blue Creek, brothers who'd gone for an early morning ride on a motorcycle in Blue Creek. But the boys wouldn't survive it, and by 8 a.m., police were processing the scene that claimed the life of seven-year-old passenger Matthew Cron while placing the 12-year-old driver, Isaiah Cron, in critical condition. It's a jarring scenario, a boy driving a motorcycle all on his own, while any adult without any adult supervision, that is. But this does happen in Mennonite communities. And tonight, that 12-year-old driver is expected to still be fighting for his life at the National Regional Hospital. We heard more from the cops earlier today. I know that on Saturday, around 8 o'clock a.m., Police responded to a scene um, where Isaiah Crane, 12 years, was driving a motorcycle. And he was accompanied at the time by Matthew Crane, seven years. He collided into a Toyota Ford runner, Ford runner, sorry. <clears throat> Driven at the time by Susan um, Freeze. We know that the boys were transported to the Western Regional, to the hospital, sorry, where um, the seven year old succumbed to his injury. And Isaiah is listed in a critical condition. Did they drift into the other lane or something? Well, um, based, on, based on the information sent to us, um, it would want to suggest that they did. Okay. And in this case where a 12-year-old is driving a motorcycle, can the parents be faced with any type of charges? Well, um, we know that the investigators are looking at every angle when it comes to this accident. We know that um, in some of these um, Mennonite communities, for the purpose of work, their um, machineries are operated by miners at times, um, where the law goes to, the ex to which ex extent the law goes when it comes to their usage of these um, machinery and equipment, we would really have to um, review and carefully go through the laws to see the offenses, if any were committed by these miners. So it's a very difficult investigation, but um, as soon as I know more, you will know more. What about the woman driving the vehicle? Was she served at any kind of NIP? Well, that was not indicated to me. But um, whenever a traffic accident occurs, even if you are not deemed to be at fault because you are the driver or operator of a vehicle in that, involved in that incident, you will be served with notice of intended prosecution until your name has been ruled out as anybody liable or held accountable. 
And yet another fatal RTA. This one was between mile 27 and 28 on the Hummingbird Highway. 49-year-old Cesar Giovanni Larios of, Valles, of Valley of the Peace, that is, died when he seemed to have lost control of his vehicle and collided with the railing along the highway. The cops didn't have much to say about the incident this morning, only that the vehicle was extensively damaged. On the 19th of March, sometime around 4, 10 p.m., police visited miles 27 and 28 on the Hummingbird Highway where they saw a blue two-door Isuzu Amigo SUV um, on the side of the highway. This vehicle was seen with the front portion extensively damaged, including the windshield. And somewhere about three to about three feet off the highway from the vehicle, they found the body of Cesar Giovanni Larios, 49 years. The lifeless body of Mr. Larios was transported to the Western Regional Hospital, where it was pronounced dead by a medical officer. A blowout is believed to have caused the accident. And we take a break now, but when we come back, we'll tell you about that fire in St. Matthews that has left 400 children without a school building. Stay tuned. Get ready for Ben. Fantastic discounts from now through to September 30th. Venice is having store-wide discounts on tools, paints, appliances, plumbing and electrical products, lights and fans, household items, and much, much more. Visit a Venice store near you to enjoy fantastic discounts from now through to September 30th. Only at Venice. Quality and savings. Atla Express is a service that allows you to perform financial transactions conveniently at your neighborhood stores countrywide. Enjoy the convenience of cash withdrawals, bill payments, credit card payments, top up or transfer between your accounts. All you need is your Atlantic Bank Visa debit card along with an ID. Non-Atlantic Bank customers can also enjoy the service by paying with cash. Atla Express is easy, convenient, secure, and near you. Whether you're home or just home for the moment, the beauty that is Belize, every sun-kissed wave, every treasure discovered far beneath the surface, every pristine waterfall and majestic forest will captivate your senses and send your spirit soaring. With our fleet of comfortable, fast vessels and service second to none, San Pedro Belize Express is proud to be with you on every step of this breathtaking journey. Come ride with us to San Pedro or Key Cocker. We're your connection to the vibrant mystery of the jewel. The experience of a lifetime. San Pedro Belize Express Water Taxi. One way, one journey one magical moment at a time. If you are ailing due to a chronic disease and are left permanently invalid before retirement age, you may want to check if you qualify to receive invalidity benefit. The invalidity benefit exists for persons who are unable to continue working due to permanent illness. To qualify, you must be under 60 years old, must be sick for 26 consecutive weeks and certified to be medically unable to perform any type of work, must have at least five years of paid SSB contributions and at least five paid within the three months leading up to your illness. If you do not qualify for the invalidity pension, you may be eligible for the invalidity grant. Want to know more about invalidity benefit? Visit our website or contact any of our offices to have someone assist you. The VEL 24-7 app just got even better with new features and an upgraded look. With this amazing app, you can now request for a payment extension or a payment arrangement, request to relocate your meter within your property, view your account credit rating, submit a claim. You can even download your bill right from our app. 
Remember, you can also manage multiple accounts, calculate your bill, process payments, request new service, activate or close an account, submit reports on outages, faults, or streetlight repairs, all from the Assistant feature. The BEL 24-7 app has even more new features just for you. Upgrade or download our BEL 24-7 app today. At SMART, we embrace change, innovation, and equality. From energy and transport to telecommunications and network technology, our females are bringing their own style of leadership to traditionally male-dominated sectors and breaking down barriers for the next generation. Therefore, fostering our women's sense of self-worth, her decision-making power, her access to opportunities and resources is at the forefront at SMART. SMART celebrates all women this Women's Month under the theme Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. cabinet colleagues and I realize that we cannot reverse the prevalence of poverty overnight, but our policies and this budget reflects a passionate determination to hasten that reversal. The free secondary school education program is being funded to the tune of $6.4 million, providing support to 2,600 students who otherwise not be in the classroom. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss. Please, you're watching the Nation Station, Channel 7. In an emergency, people may try to take advantage of a person at risk, including children and women. Avoid this from happening to your family members by practicing the following. Be aware of strangers offering to take your children away and promising to help you or your family. These offers are not always genuine, and a child could be at risk of violence, exploitation, or abuse. Make every effort to let your children know that they can tell you if something happens to them, and it doesn't matter who the person is, that you will listen and report it. Talk to your children and let them know that they should ask for help immediately if someone tries to touch them in an inappropriate way or make them feel uncomfortable. Report any negative behavior or conduct by anyone. By following these tips, you can ensure the safety of your family. Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. On Friday, we told you that yet another Belize City man, George Hernandez, a.k.a. Taros, had gone missing. The last contact was a week ago when he told his family he was boarding a bus from Tea Kettle to Belize City. Hernandez was heading down to comfort his mother after a difficult day in court with her younger son, Adrian Hernandez, a 17-year-old high school schooler who has been charged with murder. But he never arrived. And one week later, he hasn't gotten in touch with any of his family members, even the sister with whom he is very close with. Seven News got in touch with her this evening, and via phone, she told us that the family, quote, got a funny kind of call this morning, end quote. She wouldn't elaborate on what that meant, but expressed concern for George's well-being. Notable is that George Hernandez was among the initial suspects for the murder of Emmert Flowers, the murder 
with which his younger brother is now charged. Another man, Kyle Lutchman, who is Flowers' son, disappeared around the same time as his father's murder. His family presumes him to be dead, but to date, his remains have not been found. We'll keep following this story and bring you more from the Hernandez family tomorrow when they are expected to begin searches for George. Meanwhile, in other news, almost 200 students from St. Matthew's Government School are forced to return temporarily to distance learning after their school building caught fire. The blaze broke out on Saturday and seven of the classrooms along with adjacent offices received either fire or water damage. And until the building is repaired, the school's administration, with the help from the Ministry of Education, will have to find a way to ensure that these students can carry out the rest of their school year. Today, our colleagues at Plus TV spoke with a principal who explained that the only explanation for the fire she could think of was a previous electrical issue they had. Well, over the weekend, I got a call um, after after six that the, the school was on fire. So I came out because I don't live in the village. I live all the way in Chargeville. And when I came out, I saw um, the remains of the building that um, we host 96 plus, 196 plus students. Five of the, the classrooms were burnt down and the other remaining classrooms were damaged by water. I don't know how the fire start because I haven't gotten anything yet from the fire department, anything official from the fire department, so I don't have any clue how it started. Um, I know at St. Matthew's Government School we had an electrical problem. I said had because it's no longer there. Um, so that was an issue for us here at St. Matthew's Government School. Well, after I met with the, the CEO from the Ministry of Education, we are still in the planning phase for this week, and next week we are looking forward to start paper-based for now until we, have, we, we come up with a concrete plan that we can use for the next two and a half remaining months for school. Because um, I know this might not, a new building might not happen right away. It's, it's impossible. So right now we need to see what is the next step for us to get these students back to school. So we're still in the planning phase. Parents are, they're also devastated because most of the parents in the, this village came to the school. So this is a community school that serves St. Matthews for many years. So they are devastated. They are in support of what we're doing. They, are, they want to know when the students will return, yes, but yet they understand that this is a devastation that we might not have them returning to school right away, but they are able to work with us, work with the paper base for now, and then see what will be the plan forward. And this morning, the Ministers of Education, Infrastructure Development and Sustainable Development visited the school. A press release from the Minister of Education stated, quote, the group toured the affected structure and met with the principal, vice principal and teachers on the way forward for the school. Minister Fonseca expressed his sincere sympathy with the teachers and reassured them of the ministry's support in the aftermath of the incident. Our ministry will work in close collaboration with the school, the Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Housing, and other partners to ensure its students can promptly, safely, and responsibly return to school as soon as possible." End quote. Meanwhile, over the weekend, Belizeans heard the news of yet another shocking home invasion in Belmopan. And once again, reports were that the gunman had entered a home where a very young child was present. They were said to have threatened the family at gunpoint and stolen over $200 in cash that was stashed in a Bible. And while this harrowing tale would once again threaten the peace and security that the capital city was once known for, it might not be all it's cracked up to be. That's according to ASP Fitzroy Yearwood, who this morning called the report made by the Gutierrez family a mischievous one. Here's more. On the 16th of March, Victor Gutierrez made a report claiming certain things 
about a burglary at his residence, but um, our investigators are doing an um, in-depth follow-up to it, where they have found many loopholes in his report. And um, as soon as I get those findings, I will send them to you. But at this time, um, we are treating it as, how to say, not to be completely honest. We have um, several charges that we could level, but for the beginning, initially, we are treating this report as a mischievous report. After investigators have um, found too many discrepancies in his initial statement that um, cannot be proven. Whenever people go to that extent to try to make their story believable and uh, to refer to our boot, boots as um, police boots, we don't have a particular type of boots that we would want to claim that that is solely used by police officers. Of course, then it would be like the uniform where you will be deemed to be using that illegally if that was uh, police type boots. One, we don't have that. I can show you the boots that I am wearing is much different from what other officers would be wearing. So um, I believe that he was just trying to make it sound um, believable. And of course, if we find him to be guilty of committing a mischievous act, he will be charged. And we'll take a break now and have much more news when we come back, including an update on those seabed properties in Keycocker. Stay tuned. Skip the trip to the bank and perform cash withdrawals at your neighborhood store with Atla Express. Withdrawals are now free and customers can withdraw up to $300 daily. All you need is your Atlantic Bank Visa debit card along with an ID. Atla Express is easy, convenient, secure, and near you. Atlantic Bank, building the future together. ¿Sabías que? Hospital Galenia se sitúa en el lugar 27 del Ranking Nacional de Hospitales Privados de México, estudio realizado por la Fundación Mexicana para la Salud y se ubica en el top 3 de la zona sur. Siempre a la vanguardia, Hospital Galenia, más que un hospital. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss.
This newscast is brought to you by Cellular World, your authorized Samsung distributor. Please, you're watching the Nation Station, Channel 7. And last week we told you about the surprising land application coming out of northern Key Cocker where a company and an individual had applied for permission to survey land, large land parcels which just happened to be in the sea. By sheer luck it came to the attention of the landowners who bought the beachfront abutting those properties. They were shocked when they saw the map with the detail of the lands being applied for and realized that instead of gazing into the Caribbean blue, they could be looking into someone's backyard. Their attorney called Seven News to bring attention to that issue and it seems to have worked, partially at least. Seven News obtained copies of the application for permission to survey and called the persons named in the Blue Bliss Enterprise application. She is 23-year-old Yamilet Cocon of Bienque Viejo Town. She is applying for the seabed, not in front of those beachfront properties, but the one adjoining it that goes down to the split. She was acting on behalf of the company Blue Bliss Enterprise, formed in May of 2022. Cocon told us that she was on the lookout for properties and came across that lot in the Register of National Lands, and that is how she applied. But she says that after last week's news story, she has informed the Ministry of Natural Resources that she won't proceed with the application. She says, quote, she does not want to disrupt other parties around me, the persons who bought with the intent of having an ocean view, end quote. Apparently, she didn't know that the persons who buy seafront properties pay a high premium so that they can have that view. As for the CEO of Natural Resources telling us that the minister wouldn't have signed it anyway, Kokon says she supports the government's decision. However, this change of heart still doesn't give any comfort to those American retirees who we interviewed last week because Kokon was applying for the adjoining seabed, not the one in front of their properties. So we also tried to call that person, Zenaida Allen, based on the number on the application. But when we did, the person who answered told us we had the wrong number. So that one is still out there. Last week, we asked their attorney, how does one apply for land in the seabed? However, I don't think that I could reasonably go in and make an application for 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 a portion of the seabed in front of the existing coastline, I, I I would think that I would be laughed out of the office. And when we see that happening, we wonder if there are moving hands behind these things. Oftentimes, um, you know, um, if someone receives a favorable indication from somewhere inside the government or the public service that they could try and think. They're concerned about it. Um, we think, and it's for that reason that we're approaching and seeking assistance from the government early on for them not to approve it. We we are also concerned because, as you know, sometimes mistakes happen in the government department. Sometimes these things might go unnoticed by the persons uh, above, uh, and they would only be faced with it until it is raised and it is late. Um, it's raised late before them. Um, and this is one um, area that, as you indicated, that somehow seems to keep the interest of many. Um, it appears to happen quite often in Kikakar. And so hopefully this is, it doesn't occur and that this is the last person who tries to survey um, ocean property uh, in Kikakar. We'll keep following this story and bring you updates. And last week we told you about Lucy Fleming's sudden exit from the tribunal to review the Department of the Environment's decision on the Waterloo project. We said Fleming had bolted and that she stepped down only to take weeks, to take two weeks that is, after she was appointed. Well, she put up a lengthy Facebook post this morning saying she didn't bolt. 
The Post says that since July of 2021, she and her family have been, quote, tirelessly seeking justice for my grandson, Ladi, while also establishing a nonprofit foundation in his name. And it was during the trial for his alleged killer that she was first notified by phone that she was being offered the tribunal position. She told them that she needed more information, and on the 10th of March, she contacted the ministry to learn more. She was told that I would be contacted by the CEO on Monday, the 12th of March. She was not contacted, and she says that at that same time, she was preparing for Lottie's trial on the 15th of March and reviewing strategies and documents for Lottie's foundation going forward. She says, quote, I realize that in fairness to the tribunal role, the foundation and myself, I did not have the energy, resources and overall capacity to properly fulfill the demand required to do the role justice, end quote. So she says she didn't step down. She calls it a non-acceptance of, quote, a position I was honored to have been nominated for. Meanwhile, another story, preventing maternal deaths is one of the main priorities of the Maternal and Child Health Care Unit at the Ministry of Health. And during COVID, the incidence of the mothers dying while pregnant or while giving birth spiked greatly. And now, even post-pandemic, some developed countries are still seeing an alarmingly high rate of maternal deaths. In Belize, however, while that number spiked in 2021, it was reduced in 2022, and so far in 2023, there have been no maternal deaths reported. Today, Dr. Natalia Baer gave us more details via Zoom. Maternal mortality is definitely one of the key indicators and outcomes that we try our best to provide quality care to have at the end a healthy mother and a healthy child. But um, the countries around the world have been improving on maternal mortality rates, but COVID-19 um, came and the numbers that were seen in other countries and also in Belize has uh, put us back 10, 20 years or more um, based on the maternal mortality rate. So far Belize, um, four years, five years before COVID, we had 10 maternal deaths per year, nine, 10, even four before um, in 2020. And that was the first year of COVID. But in 2021, we had 16 maternal deaths. And in 2022, we have four maternal deaths. And for 2023, uh, we have none uh, documented so far. Now, out of those 16 that died in 2021, if we were to match the numbers according to when they occur, uh, it matched perfectly with the Delta wave and then later on with the Omicron wave. So um, out of 16, nine were due to COVID-19. Meanwhile, in other news, Marconi Leal Jr. He is the CEO in the Ministry of Transport, Youth and Sports. Recently, we reported that his hands had been tied by his minister, Rodwell Ferguson, who told him in a letter that even as the minister's accounting officer, Leal could no longer authorize any expenditure greater than $5,000. That's a sure sign of discontent brewing, and over the weekend into today's reports emerged that Leal Jr. had resigned. Well, this evening he told us it is not true that he has, that he has res resigned, but there are also reports that he will be changing ministries, making a lateral move to part ways with Ferguson. And when we asked about that, well, we're still waiting for the answer. But if and when something does happen, we'll let you know. And we will take a quick break and we will be back with more news. Stay tuned. This newscast 
is brought to you by Cellular World, your authorized Samsung distributor. Live your best life and explore more with Samsung. Go on an adventure, travel in style, and capture your memories with a Galaxy. This month, Samsung phones start at an extremely low price of only $309, and Galaxy Tab start at only $399. The full Galaxy lineup includes the A03, A04, A23, A33, A53, S20 FE, Z Flip, Z Fold 4, Tab A7, and the latest and most innovative release, the S23 series. Perfect for capturing all of life's adventures. Plus, when you buy any A-Series device, you'll get a free 32 gigabyte SD card. Shop these awesome devices at any of Samsung's authorized resellers countrywide, including Cellular World, Digi, Quartz, and Odette's Home Center, and get one-year local warranty with your purchase. So, venture out and explore more with Samsung. Do you want quick cash for your gold? Then take advantage of Monica's Pawn Shop's Big Loans on Gold and our guaranteed low rate of only 10% on all pawn jewelry. But it doesn't stop there. We also pawn TVs, buy scrap gold, and pawn vehicles that you can still drive. Visit Monica's Pawn Shop today in our Belize City location at number 128 Cemetery Road, our Belmopan location at number 5 Garden Plaza, our Orange Walk location, number 2 Belize, Carazal Road. Give us a call at 207 and get more money for your gold jewelry. More Belizeans have jobs. 95% of those who seek employment are working. 95%. For the first time in the history of Belize, we have an unemployment rate of 5%. Percent, thanks to a PUP government. 42,965 workers have received a $1.70 or 51% per hour salary increase because of the recent increase in the minimum wage to $5 per hour. Atla Express. Es un servicio que te permite realizar transacciones financieras cómodamente en comercios cerca de ti. Con Atla Express puedes retirar efectivo, realizar pagos de facturas y tarjeta de crédito, comprar recargas y transferir entre tus cuentas. Solo necesitas una identificación válida y tu tarjeta de débito Visa de Atlantic Bank. Si no eres cliente de Atlantic Bank, Siempre puedes disfrutar de este servicio pagando en efectivo. Atla Express es fácil, conveniente, seguro y está cerca de ti. ¿Sabías que Hospital Galenia se sitúa en el lugar 27 del Ranking Nacional de Hospitales Privados de México. Estudio realizado por la Fundación Mexicana para la Salud y se ubica en el top 3 de la zona sur. Siempre a la vanguardia, Hospital Galenia, más que un hospital. The UDP was traditionally known as the party whose leaders stood for patriotism and principle. But today, the characters controlling our party are driven by self-interest and beholden to special interest. While thousands of Belizeans strongly oppose the Ashcroft Waterloo project, which experts say would endanger our precious barrier reef, Shine fully supports and tries to justify it. The Waterloo Port Project proposal, which, if approved, will bring tremendous economic development to Belize. Perifit, meanwhile, is 100% behind the State Bank project with no express justification, leaving us to conclude it is all about who owns it. I'm not sympathetic to the State Bank project. I've been 100% full support of the State Bank project. How tragically the UDP has fallen from principled leadership to shameless lobbyists in control. As the UDP prepares to celebrate its 50th anniversary as a mass party, it is time to return to our foundation with leaders who stand for patriotism and principle and rid ourselves of those motivated by self-interest and beholden to special interest.
Mikado announces the arrival of new designs in dress fabrics, sheet and fabrics, curtain fabrics, and a widest assortment of company uniform fabrics. We also just received the long-awaited wallpaper and 3D wallpaper with many new designs and colors to choose from. Also in our new arrivals, we have pillows, curtains, bath towels, cushions, bed cover sets, and there is so much that it's way too much to mention. Just visit Mikado at number 37 Albert Street. And remember now, at Mikado, we are the ones famous for better prices, and even in this pandemic, we are still known for the best prices. Mikado, number 37 Albert Street, your textile palace. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss. Please. You're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. In an emergency, people may try to take advantage of a person at risk, including children and women. Avoid this from happening to your family members by practicing the following. Be aware of strangers offering to take your children away and promising to help you or your family. These offers are not always genuine, and a child could be at risk of violence, exploitation, or abuse. Make every effort to let your children know that they can tell you if something happens to them, and it doesn't matter who the person is, that you will listen and report it. Talk to your children and let them know that they should ask for help immediately if someone tries to touch them in an inappropriate way or make them feel uncomfortable. Report any negative behavior or conduct by anyone. By following these tips, you can ensure the safety of your family. Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. And some good news, there's a new mural in the historic village of Yalbak in the Orange Walk District. Carmen Carrillo, the woman who coordinated its creation along with six artists from Palmar, told us about the deep meaning behind the complex piece of art. She says it's in honor of the village's forefathers who had the strength and fortitude to build and build the village until it became what it is today. Here's her guided look at the new mural in her town. Okay, we had the first, we have in, the, in, the, in that section there to my left is the, when the people came out, um, they were evicted from Yalbak and you can see the, the, they burnt down the houses, they destroyed the crops, they, they destroyed everything the people had worked there for generations, generations, because the village was burned twice once in the early 1800s and then again in 1934. So um, the mural is showing the coming of the people, the way they came from the, the train to the barge and they were ditched into barracks to live in tents for two years. That's where many people died. And when they arrived here, there was the, the um, typhoid fever going around. It was an ep epidemic and many of the families disappeared due to the typhoid epidemic. And then we come over this side where we show the people constructing all over, making, building the houses, using the natural resources from around here. And also the, um, the new families that, that has em have emerged and the tradition how it's being we owe honor and and homage to our ancestors who came from Yalbak to start building here in, in this new site. I think that we have not done justice to them by by um, by honoring them and and accepting that it was due to their hard work that we now have a community to call our own. 
and also because I believe that we should save our culture, our history, our traditions, which is already dying. If you notice today, the girls dance and there was no boy. So we need to, to embrace our culture a little more. We need to give it more meaning. We, we need to give it more value. And I think that that's where we are feeling as a community. And that's why I wanted to plaster the, the image of our, of the coming, of the pain, of all the heartache, of all the, the difficulties they had to go through so that we can teach our new generation to value what they have. We can see a group of modern villagers, modern day um, builders, which we have teachers, doctors, um, stylists, musicians, and all of those we have in our village. So we make tribute to all of them also. And in other cultural news, Juliet Vernon Austin. She was the daughter of Creole legend Leela Vernon. And tonight, the sad news is that she too has passed away. She was keeping the fires burning for the Creole culture after her mother died in 2017. Juliet was also known as a firebrand and a community activist in PG. But that legacy building came to an end last night when the 30-something succumbed to her battle with cancer. Today, her friend Emmett Young told us more about her own life and legacy. So she was always, if anything Creole in, in PG, if anybody want to think about Creole, you in the PG, because as you know, she lived in the States, but she would come down uh, from time to time, maybe spend uh, four to six months sometimes, like four months, and she would always promoting Creole culture down there in PG. So if anybody are uh, interested and in, about Creole culture, they would go to her and she was also running a museum. His mom had a museum, so she take it over. And uh, and she, by by doing um, presentation shows, um, she would rent a uh, Creole costumes because they had other Creole costumes and book it for Creole, trying to preserve and make the Creole culture move forward. So we had last somebody very important. You know, a lot of times we don't realize um, the importance of people until we lost them, and that's what happened to us. Um, and then finally, sir, how, how old was she, and what? Um, I don't know if... Um, exact age, but I would say she's about 30, if I would guess, I would say between 38 and 39, really no more older than her. Man, that's she's young. a little bit older than me, and I just turned 56. And so what is it that she was suffering from? She had cancer. I don't know what kind, but that, that was the last report I get from his um, his uncle, Henry, which is a um, musician too. He told me, boy, um, let's sick bad, she's not going to live very long. He was praying for her and stuff like that. And it's just been like a few months. Uh, I think it was, uh, I get that news like late last year that she had cancer. Yeah. And that's 7 News Tonight. Thanks for joining us. I am Miriam abdul Kawi. You can find a transcript at 7newsbelize.com and see streaming video of the news on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Have a good night and please join Indira Craig back here tomorrow at 6.